Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So you join me uh, with the data set and the file that we previously used in our last video where we use VBA to transpose uh, a simple or ever growing data table so that we didn't have to do it manually. We could literally just run our VBA script and it would paste into the sheet. And just to give you a demonstration, if I delete this and rerun the code, you can see that it's gone into sheet number one, it's copied our data that we have in this format here, and it's gone through to sheet number two and pasted it for us in a transposed manner. The purpose of this video is literally to show you how you can add a few lines of code and have this reorder your columns as you desire. So often I've had this experience where I've had maybe a report that has or has not needed to be transposed, and then I've been having to manually go through and cut columns and put them into different orders, not necessarily alphabetical order, but just because of preference to however that report is needing to be done uh, to be sent to a particular individual. So we're gonna show you how you can do that just as a simple extension of the code we've already done. So looking at the code window we've got on the left-hand side here, you can see at the moment we've obviously stored our data, we've stored it as an array, we've then transposed our data. So you might not need this particular step I've got here and it will work perfectly fine. All you need to do is store your data in an array and then you can uh, not include this uh, transpose section, but I will be leaving it in there for the purposes of the video. And this is the part where I simply now go and paste it all into the range. But we don't want that. What we want to do is we want to reorder these columns uh, just on the random format, just as whatever is desired by our stakeholder. So all I'm gonna do is just comment out this one at the moment, just putting that in front of it, just so that line won't execute, add some couple of rows, and now we're gonna show you how we can reorder uh, our data basically by simply just selecting the, out the columns that we want in the particular order that we want them. All we need to do is if we go W or go with uh, WS2, and we'll go end with a statement down here. And the reason I'm doing it within a with statement is, as you'll see, it just uh, saves having to type out WS2 multiple times. So what we're gonna do, as it looks very similar in this first part here, we're simply gonna go dot range, open brackets, and we're firstly gonna populate uh, column A. So we want to go A1 to A, so we only want this data to go into column A. And then we're also going to go into an and, and what we'll need to do is go into last column. So the reason I'm using last column here, so we're, we're basically saying in our range, we want our range to be in column A, and we want it to go down to row last column. And if you remember in the last video, we're using last column because before we transposed our data, last column indicated the last date of data that we had available. And because it's been transposed, obviously that's now going down into rows. So hence, that's why we're using last column. So not to get confused in there with last column and obviously your normal understanding of needing to put a row reference here. Once we've done that, we can go uh, close brackets dot value equals application dot index. Uh, open my array, oh, so my array, comma, comma, one, close brackets, done. So what I'll just quickly do is I'm just gonna populate the rest of these just so we've got all of our columns here. So we've currently got nine and then we can obviously continue on and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so I've been through and populated all of that for our existing columns. So if I'm just to remove this row here, and we can come down to here. You can now see that for columns A through to I, so obviously our columns A through to I we have here, that I've now obviously put a reference to each column in terms of pasting the data. So you can see this range here, value is gonna equal obviously the output. And at the moment in my array, obviously we've got these nine different fields to call them that for just for easiest. And to index or reference each one of those columns of data, all we need to do is use this simple application.index of my array, and we want to look at the reference of one and so on through all these files. So if we just delete our data here, and let's rerun this, you can see at the moment it looks exactly the same as it did previously when we had that simple line of code. Uh, what I've just now actually deleted out here just for uh, not to get confused. So, I've so that gives us exactly the same look and feel. If however, we didn't want it to be in this order and like the purpose of this video, and let's say we wanted city three, then two, then one, all we simply need to do here is go down into our data into column G and just say, actually we don't want the seventh um, 
index or column within our data set. We want this to be the ninth and we want the seventh to be shown down the bottom here. Um, and let's also say that we don't want Edinburgh to be in the fourth position. We want Ed Edinburgh to replace Birmingham. So all we need to do is go to Edinburgh, what's the fourth one here? And we know Birmingham is here and simply change that to the four and that to a two. So if we now uh, delete our data here, or actually what we could do is we could copy this and just paste it on this row here. And I'll just clear these, this data up here, just so we can remember where our data was. Now, when I run this code, you can see how it's all been changed for us. So we've now got um, obviously Edinburgh in position number one here rather than Birmingham. And obviously Birmingham is now showing in here rather than Edinburgh. And also city three, two, one order rather than one, two, three. So I think that was a bit of a short video really because we've done a lot of the content in the previous video. If you haven't seen that previous video, go check it out now. Hopefully there'll be a link on the screen somewhere, but that'll give you a bit more context on how well, all this code on the left here, what it means and how we used it to transpose our original data. And then once you're happy with that, you all you need to do is use these additional few lines of code, which give you the flexibility to then dynamically, or not dynamically, but to reorder your data as required. It's worth mentioning though, we in our first video, we touched on how this was very dynamic. So regardless of if new data was added or like as into rows or columns, it would pick up our new data. The only thing to remember when it comes to using this next bit of code is obviously it's fixed. So if you're wanting to have um, more, uh, more data, like uh, add, like I say, uh, I can't remember how many we got to, we've got nine rows of data. If you wanted to add like a 10th or further, uh, obviously you would have a limitation. You'd need to make sure you are then still referencing it in here. Um, I think I've got the moment. So if you're looking at this tra untransposed data, if your number of cities wasn't going to increase any further, that was fixed. Um, but you're adding more dates, that would work fine. It's only because these are referring to, obviously, as it looks here, our initial rows. So yeah, if you're gonna add additional rows and then transpose the data and then use this technique to reorder, it will be fine. And you can continue adding as much date or new dates and dates information as you require. But if you want to add new cities, then obviously you'll need to make sure that you're updating it in this with statement, uh, else they won't be included in your data. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do give it a like if it's given you an answer to your question or if it's just shown you something new. I'm sure you will find this definitely useful at some point in your Excel career. Lastly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all of our future videos. And lastly, thank you very much again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.